Much of what is called Tantra in the contemporary culture is associated with the sacred sexuality movement. If you're an alpha male or avoidant attachment style and you crave intimacy but you've had a hard time opening up, Yab Yum can be the remedy. Comment yes if you're interested in how this works. Tantric breast massage. Yab Yum is the tantric meditation. It unites and balances masculine and feminine energy. This practice can be done with a sexual partner, as you've seen in my previous post, or someone that you're not sexually intimate with at all, like my best friend and business partner, Dakota. This movement has almost nothing to do with true Tantra. New Age appropriation of Tantra has led to greater confusion regarding the nature of Maithuna. Maithuna is the traditional practice of Tantric sex. It is performed by a couple that has formed a divine union. Divine union consists of a human sexual bond that is elevated beyond the profane. It is an ascended position from which the couple may enjoy each other in liberation. The divine union can only be achieved by two individuals who have achieved self-realization, full expression of the ego. Such a union is exceedingly rare, especially in the profanity of modernity. New Age sacred sexuality practitioners are totally divorced from the actual tradition of Tantra. Tantra is a hollow pose to these people. They identify with the trappings, but they have no real energetic understanding of what they are doing. For most of these New Agers, Tantra is an excuse to act like a hedonistic Kumar while claiming elevated consciousness. I have more respect for the shameless porn addict than the sacred sex coomer who adopts a holier-than-thou attitude while displaying their total lack of knowledge. Now, don't get me wrong, I have no hang-ups about sex. I do not believe that sex should only be pursued for the sake of procreation, nor do I believe that everyone should wait for marriage to have sex or any other petty moralisms. What I have a problem with is the bastardization of an ancient practice that has the potential to connect dedicated yogins to a much deeper understanding of the cosmos. When I listen to the sacred sex crowd talk about Tantra, I hear the same nonsense that is expelled in the wider New Age movement. These people consistently misrepresent the nature of the chakras kundalini and consciousness. I know that they have never experienced actual tantric sex because if they had, they would have a much better understanding of the concepts that they claim to practice as experts and gurus. One aspect of tantra that is deeply misunderstood by the new age is the divine union. The essential nature of the Divine Union is the intensive strengthening of the ego which gives birth to a new expression of ego directly related to the coupling. This coupled ego is an expression of the intense love and desire within the Divine Union and it is often perceivable by individuals outside of the Union. The Divine Union is not something that is constructed between two people who lack an essential connection. It is an organic connection between two individuals who are both dharmically aligned and liberated. Such a coupling does not require sacrifice on the part of either individual. Rather, it is a platform through which the ego is nurtured and advanced to new forms of realization. Many sacred sexuality practitioners act as though tantric sex is defined by a set of techniques. Make love like a tantric with these three tips. Heart thrusting is for corn. Tantrics recommend slow and shallow motions to start. Slow and soft caresses and you won't need any lubricant at all. Her upper lip is sensual. Kiss it and you'll drive her wild. 
semen retention training, link in bio. This is simply not true. Tantric sex is the result of the divine union, and it cannot occur outside of said union. There are, of course, specific methods that may be applied within the framework of the divine union, but these methods are only tantric when the proper energetic connection of a couple is present. It is important to recognize that there is great potential for abuse within the New Age sacred sexuality movement. The New Age idea that a tantric connection can be built through practice alone, regardless of the dharma of the practitioners, is one of the most insidious ideas to crawl out of the New Age dogma. It is this idea that has entrapped many people with honest intentions. A tantric connection is an attractive thing, and individuals desperate to find such a connection are sometimes preyed upon by degenerates who exploit the New Age culture of ego dissolution. Methuna simply refers to any sex act that is tantric in nature. Tantric sex consists of the unification of body, mind, and spirit through sexual union. Tantric sex is only accessible to those in a divine union. It is an expression of the divine through sex. The practice of tantric sex consists of the cultivation of greater power through the very act of sex. There are many methods that may be explored under the umbrella of tantric sex. One such example is the divine union ritual. The method for conducting the divine union ritual is as follows. The man enters into Padmasana. The woman straddles the man, wrapping her legs around his waist. The couple embraces by wrapping their arms around each other. Sex continues until the woman reaches orgasm. The man traditionally ejaculates into the mouth of the woman. In the divine union ritual, the man represents Shiva, the contemplative element, and the woman represents Shakti, the active element. Contrary to what is often taught by transcendent-oriented yoga schools, semen retention is not a requirement, and in fact, the consumption of semen by the woman is the traditional method that predates the retention dogma. If you go 30 days without busting and up, busting and up, everybody looks attractive. The fours start looking like sixes, the sixes start looking like eights. The women over 50 look attractive. Hell, even the men start looking attractive. <laughs> Hell, even the men start looking attractive. Semen represents Amrita, the nectar of immortality, the source of egoic expression and a means of shared power in the divine union. As can be seen in the divine union ritual, tantric sex has the power to bring a couple into connection with the gods. A couple with a tantric connection possesses the potential to access the gods through a shared experience, and this can be an important path to the cultivation of shared power. Within the tantric tradition, there are certain deities that have a deep connection to the practice of Methuna. One such deity is Chenamasta. By exploring her nature through tantric sex, it is possible to gain her favor and achieve the cultivation of greater power. Chenamasta is a ferocious manifestation of Shakti. She is most often depicted as nude with blood-red skin and a fountain of blood flowing from her self-decapitated body. Shinamasta stands atop a couple who are in Methuna. She is accompanied by her female attendants, Takini and Varnini, who drink the blood that spurts from her neck, just as she drinks her own blood. The blood of Shinamasta is intoxicating and is imbued with the power of Shakti. As a manifestation of Shakti, 
she represents the aspects of sex, death, and sacrifice. Worship of Shinamasta is closely related to the practice of tantric sex, specifically the orgasm and the consumption of semen. The symbolism of blood and sex is particularly significant. The Mithuna, copulating couple, below Shinamasta, are representative of the Muladhara, the seat of Kundalini in the age of Shakti. The fountain of blood that erupts from the neck of Shinamasta represents the Kundalini rising. The specific form of Kundalini Tantra that is associated with Shinamasta is Methuna with ejaculation. Rather than retaining semen, the man ejaculates into the mouth of the woman who then consumes the semen in a ritual blood sacrifice. This is considered a sacrifice on the part of the man because he is releasing his semen and the female accepts the energy of the semen through consumption. In accepting semen from the male, the female must reach a state of Dionysian lust, which is represented by the extreme hunger of Dakini and Varnini. This hunger for sexual energy on the part of the female acts as a means of consciously absorbing Shakti through participation in ritual sex. The couple below Shinamasta consists of Kama and Rati. This couple represents divine eroticism. It is important to note that they are most often depicted in the Viparita Rati position. This is a tantric sex position where the woman straddles the man who is on his back. This position is significant because it allows the woman to control the rhythm of sex. In this position, the woman is able to give into the Dionysian and achieve a state of sexual ferocity that grounds the consciousness in the Muladhara. At its strongest manifestation, this ritual leads the woman into a trance of ecstasy. It is the duty of the man to ensure that the woman reaches orgasm, and this must be directly followed by ejaculation into the mouth of the woman. A skilled tantric yogi should also be able to bring some women to the point of female ejaculation, at which point the Amrita, or the nectar of the gods, may be consumed by the woman or man depending upon the intention of the ritual. Multiple women may be included in this ritual with the primary woman participating in the intercourse while the other women act as attendants and share in the blood sacrifice. Shinamasta's abode is the cremation ground. Shinamasta's Methuna ritual may be conducted in a cremation ground or graveyard in order to magnify its effects. The conscious presence of symbols of death during ritual sex may allow one to transcend duality. This transcendence results from the intermingling of creative and destructive aspects. If one lacks access to a cremation ground or graveyard, one may fill the ritual space with symbols of death, such as human skulls and black sheets, before entering into Methuna. Sex magic is extremely powerful due to the energetic nature of sex. Those who practice right-hand path asceticism within the system of Vyagra Yoga are required to enter into a period of celibacy at the highest level of practice. Sex is an extremely powerful attachment within this dimension. Therefore, celibacy is presented as a final challenge at the highest point of ascension. If this attachment can be broken by the yogin on the ascending path, the full scope of sex magic becomes available on the descending left-hand path. 
Tantric sex is a form of sex magic that has the potential to bring the yogin to godhood on the left-hand path. Through the divine union, it is possible to experience a living death, wherein the clear light is experienced and the yogin rejects dissolution into the oneness. The divine union forms the basis for this rejection. The tantric connection is so strong between the two lovers in the divine union that they choose to preserve their ego into eternity. The love of the divine union usurps the power of God, and this love is expressed outside of the cycle of time. New Age Sacred Sexuality does not offer a path to Godhood through the divine union. It does not provide the framework for understanding the nature of a tantric connection. It serves only to confuse and separate worthy practitioners from a tradition that has the potential to introduce true beauty in both an exoteric and esoteric sense.